Now I think it would be interesting to go over the evolution of rifle design in the 20th century because I know a lot of people are interested in rifles that watch this channel but despite not owning a functioning rifle because I'm in Britain and I've never bothered to apply for an FAC uh, I can still obviously, I've read up a lot of history on them and I've talked to enough people on YouTube and watched enough videos to understand the functionality of them so let's get started so at the beginning of the 20th century you'd have seen something like this this is a Lee Enfield short magazine Lee Enfield and um, most armies in Western Europe would have been equipped with and America as well rifles such as this bolt action and these rifles fired full-size cartridges you'd simply open the bolt load the rounds into through with a clip into the magazine underneath the rifle close the breech the rifle was ready to fire you then cycle the action for each shot now bolt actions are incredibly efficient they use full-size rifle cartridges and you'd sort of get probably up to a miles range on them just about if the shooter was good enough most shooters weren't but that was the sort of range the cartridge itself could do from the barrel length on one of these rifles so examples of bolt action rifles are like this the Lee Enfield Mossin Nagants that Russia used the Germans had the Gouveia 98 and the um, Carbina 98 and the Japanese had the Arisaka I think it was called the Americans had the Springfield but they have generally five to ten rounds in a magazine fixed to the bottom of the rifle you'd load it via a um, strip clip and um, yeah, the rifle had a good long range you could shoot them fairly fast if you were trained to do it and they are all round good rifles however the disadvantage are it's fairly heavy although the Lee Enfield's very nicely balanced it's still quite a heavy gun and obviously cycling it and reloading it is slower than if you had something that was properly magazine fed I know this is magazine fed but you know what I mean a self cycling gun self loading rifle if you were and in going into World War II machine guns were becoming more produced but most infantry soldiers still used bolt action rifles now for tank crews and other such smaller rifles are being developed because they were more practical it was found that these soldiers are going to be using these rifles less, engaging soldiers at less range, and they would want something that was, you know, lighter weight, more compact. So now we have something interesting. We have the M1 carbine, which is a very good rifle. And um, firstly, it's loaded from a magazine, uh, properly from a magazine. You can switch the mags on it, and it's self-loading. So once you've initially cocked it, when you shoot off a round it will cycle the action and load itself now the rounds for this were much smaller than full bolt action rifle rounds but they were larger than pistol rounds so you have something that has a greater range than an SMG a greater accuracy than an SMG over a distance but still isn't massively long range but they're finding by this stage that most firefights are actually at 300 meters or less the M1 carbine has a range of about 200 meters to 300 meters depending on the shooter's skill uh, so this was a, you know, an ideal cartridge for that and an ideal rifle for that. It was lightweight, easy to aim, and you had you know, a very practical rifle. Now, World War II ends, and this logic of the best rifle, you know, the best rifle designed to carry on with is getting to, um, you know, logic is that most firefights are under 300 meters. Now, the Russians are actually ahead of the West. They developed the Kalashnikov series of rifles. And this is going to use 762 by 39 millimeters, which is, uh, the Kalashnikov design was heavily influenced by the um, World War II German Sturmgewehr, if I can even get the mag back into Kalashnikov, there you go. And the Sturmgewehr was not as efficient around as what the Kalashnikov uses, but it was um, the design you know, it was a clever design for the time and ahead of its time. So the Kalashnikov was heavily based on the Sturmgewehr, and then essentially you have a gun that shoots, you know, it's self-cycling, it's automatic, and you're shooting a rifle round that's much shorter than a bolt action rifle round, but still bigger than the M1 carbines. So you've got, you know, 300 to 400 meters engagement range, you've got a rifle that's automatic, and it's a very reliable rifle as well. Now, at the west in this point, you've still got this. You, you've still got something much more similar to a bolt-action rifle. 
This is an A1 SLR, which is the British version of the FNFAO, or FAO. Now, what makes this rifle so good in a sense, or well, despite it being big and clumsy, similar to um, a World War One rifle, World War Two rifle, is that um, it's as well as being you know the same sort of size as a bolt action rifle, it also uses a much bigger round. You've got the 762 by 51 millimeter NATO, and what made the SLR so or the Fowl series of rifles so good was that this bullet was able you know to have a pretty decent range to cartridge on it and it was powerful as well uh, compared to lighter cartridges at longer ranges it still had a lot more kick to it when it hit something you know a lot more energy velocity to the bullet itself now you know the FAL has got the same advantage as the AK has you can load it via magazines it's fast to load you know it's either semi or fully automatic depending on which variant you have so you know it's much faster you just switch the mags out and you can sustain quite a high rate of fire However, the AK series are better because they were shorter. Now, the problem with an FAL is, although it's good at long range, out in the field, if you're in any sort of urban warfare scenario or house clearing, this is a very impractical rifle just because of the sheer length of it. I mean, trying to you know do that with this is very difficult, very easy to catch it on something. Now, I don't have one to demonstrate, but what happens next is... The Americans develop the what would essentially be the 556 cartridge. So you have a smaller cartridge again, but it's much higher velocity. So you get that 300, 400, 500 meter engagement range, but you've got a lighter cartridge that's, you know, it's fairly competent cartridge, and it's designed so the soldiers can carry more of them because it's lighter weight. So you've got more ammunition, less recoil essentially because it's a lighter cartridge. Now this catches on and the Russians develop their own version, so they take the AK and they scale down the cartridge it uses. Rather than using the 762 by 39 mm the 47 AKM used, they switch this to 5, uh, 545 by 39 mm which is basically the same bullet casing that the AKM has, if I'm not mistaken. But what they've done is they've put much smaller lighter head on it, so you've got the same velocity, well essentially greater velocity because it's a lighter bullet. So it was easy to do because you're basically fitting your rifles out to use a smaller cartridge. And that's pretty much as far as we've got. There's been experimental things that haven't caught on. But we've got, you know, 5.56 five, for NATO and 5.45 for the Russians. Both very ballistically similar cartridges. The Chinese have something similar as well. However, we've got to a stage where, because most armies have too widely adapted 5.56 five, rifles, you have the disadvantage that they're shorter range. So you found, especially when fighting insurgencies, um, you know, because they're not fighting an army equipped with the same equipment as them, they're actually at a disadvantage because 5.56A five, five, is only effective up to about 400 metres and you can be engaged by somebody who's got a rifle like the FAL or a Lee Enfield that's got, you know, 200 plus metres range on it. So they can choose to engage you at a further distance where your rifles won't reach out to it. So we're seeing a re-adoption of more battle rifles like the FAL and, you know, more designated marksman rifles. And another good thing would be more, like, lightweight machine guns that use full-size NATO cartridges, not the 5.56. So you've kind of sort of come full circle. You've gone to the lightweight assault rifle and then found that you actually need a mixture of lightweight and heavier rifles to cover all engagement ranges, which is the ideal thing. Um, there's a lot more detail you can read up on this, also about how squad layouts were different in the Soviet Union to NATO armies having you know different numbers of designated marks and machine gunners. But yeah, that's pretty much the evolution of the 20th century rifle. We go from the beginning of the 20th century with bolt action rifles to the end with automatics of much lighter weight cartridges but higher velocity rounds. Anyway, hope that's been interesting for everyone.